I wanted to know about uh, when you're 40 and you're still not attracted to have a partner. This, his son is approaching 40 and still doesn't want a partner. The ego increases, you know, pride and all that. We can see that in men and women. They don't want to get married. They don't want to have a family. What for? Why think about commitments to anyone? And when you have kids, you just think of the headaches, the problems from, from dawn to dusk. Why does he need to go through it? Our growing egos has grown relatively small uh, through history. But now we are in a time called the days of the Messiah, the last generation. And the ego is suddenly, in this 20th, 21st century, is coming to a state where we're all getting divorced. We don't want families. We don't want kids. Uh, we can't stand anyone. We can't even stand ourselves. Look at what everyone does. You know, in, in each car you have one, you have one person. Everyone has his own car, his own, his own bedroom, his own television. His own. What's so bad about it? It means that we feel no connection to others, and that's against nature. Nature is arranged in such a way that we have to be connected to each other. As one man in one more, what? All of us in one room? We're going to live in one room and drive in one car? Well, seemingly in one car. If, you, if there's someone you love, you want to be close to him. It doesn't bother you. If it's true love, if it's true good bonding among people, it doesn't, you know, he doesn't bother me. He's like me. I want him to be around me. Do you have this or not? Well, I'm just trying to picture this kind of apartment, you know. So, in the, in the past, well, Rabash used to say that when he was married, your teacher, Rabash, yes, when he was married, he says, we went to live with my wife's parents. They had a big apartment in Jerusalem, two rooms. When was that? Well, that was in 1930, maybe even less, even earlier. So he was married. He said, we went, we went in with them. They had one room, and there was another room. So instead of giving us the other room, we lived in their room, and they rented the other room. Not because they didn't have money. They were a well-off family. It was enough. So everyone had his place in the room, and that was it. That's how they lived. Their parents, their children, and the young couple lived them together. I grew up in, in a moshav in Emek which is like a village in Emek It's a valley. And because we all had our big houses and, and, and our farm, a little farm, uh, when a child gets to a certain age, they ask the parents to build a, a separate unit, living unit for the teenager. So because there was room, there were little niches for um, for the kids. So it's very far from what you're picturing. I don't know if I would like to go back to to the little room. Yes, to Robash's room. But today it's not even that. Today where the where the kids, where the parents, where where is the where's the connection between them? Yeah, but it's fun. It gives you freedom. It's independence. Our egoistic desire just that can't stand anyone. Yes, kids are leaving home. The parents, we don't want to be always connected to them, be with them. And even my wife, you know, she's there, I'm here, I have so what, my stuff that I do. The world is becoming very, very egoistic. Look at, look at how we drive. It's everywhere. People can't stand anyone next to them. Anyone. There's me, you, and... We'll have to correct it, because in the end, it's not that that's the way it's good for me, it's because the ego is forcing me to it. What do you mean? Well, the ego is growing, and it's pushing us away from each other. But that's against the general force in the world. We see that the more we advance, the more we discover the rules of the world. And the rules of the world are that we are connected to each other. The butterfly effect, something happens somewhere, you get a response in another place, in a third place, and so on. We can see that the world is round. It's all connected. We're all in one kind of planet, really. And in that one planet, we're all connected. The fact that we want to cut ourselves off from others, yes, leave me alone, I don't belong to you, in that, we're acting against nature. 
It's coming back to us. And by closing us together in this global uh, globalization, it's forcing us to connect us. We don't want it, and nature pressures us. So as a result of these two opposite forces, you get all the troubles in the world. What you're saying now, I just want the viewers to understand, you're not recommending that we all call our kids from all the rooms, come out, guys, let's all let's all move into a two-bedroom apartment. Now the correction has to go from within, outwardly we have to correct ourselves and our desires to want to be together, not physically so much, to, but so we will feel others as close to us. Without it, the world won't survive. How will it be with it? Give us a taste of the good. Everyone will be as one unit, as it is written in the prophets. One people, the people of the Lord. It's as if you're going back to Babylon. When even though it doesn't matter if you have seven billion, if they're all close to each other, you won't feel the quantity. How does an individual feel in that system? Everyone cares for him. Everyone loves him. He, you can relax because you have seven billion loyal lovers who care for you. What's so bad about that? If, if, if everyone cares for us and if we care for others in that way, everyone for everyone else. And with that desire, we all of a sudden will begin to feel that nature is treating us well. You'll have no hurricanes or ecological problems, heat, cold, nothing. All of a sudden, everything will be balanced. We will find ourselves with the surrounding nature and with us, people, and the, all the worlds will suddenly be in balance, in harmony, and we'll feel these things at all levels of life. There'll be no sicknesses, no um, arguments, no wars, no problems with the stock market or food or lack of this, lack of that, nothing. You'll just live in harmony. And that's what the, the prophets wrote about. In the end, we'll come to it, to it. But let's do it, you know, more quickly. From now on, we can do it very quickly. That's what the wisdom of Kabbalah says. Read what uh, Kabbalists are saying. It's all up to us. How fast? How fast? Today. Yeah, today. Because in spirituality, there is no time. If we really want to realize it, we can do it very quickly. What is, um, how, is it, how is it written in Joshua? And they shall take their sons and daughters on their shoulders and bring them to Jerusalem. The nations of the world themselves will begin to help us if we start aiming ourselves towards it. I really want what you just described to happen today. I'm certain the viewers too. Give us one tip, one instruction on what to do so we can come close to it from this moment. Not from the end of the show, from right now. Give us a certain direction, I don't know, in thought, and whatever. Just say, open, um, what book do you recommend for beginners? Well, not everyone likes, likes to read books. Okay, go into our side. Look at a few clips. First of all, be impressed by these things. Let them impress you. Feel that there is a very special method here called the Wisdom of Kabbalah that's appearing specifically now. And it's appearing because that's the only thing that can correct the world. Because... In this world, we can already see that we are powerless, and there's no one who has any power. But we don't know where to take it, the method and the force to, to survive, to, to do good to the world. But there's a way that can do it. Why? Because it draws a special force from above that affects us and corrects us. We don't need to try harder than just to know how to use the upper force. As it is written, the light in it reforms him. Can you give me a direction, me and the viewers, in one sentence? What should we focus on in our thoughts, say, from now on, to come closer to, to what you're describing? Let's, let's listen to the lessons together every day for maybe an hour, say, from 5 to 6 a.m. In a very short time, in a two or three months, we'll see how we're getting closer to each other, how, how our thoughts, even just an hour a day, are working together and they'll make the world one. They'll soothe us and we'll suddenly just feel relaxed. Nothing's happening. It'll be peace in Gaza, in Sterot, in with Syria, Ahmadinejad will soften up. What's the matter with him? We'll just feel it. It's very moving. 
because it's nature's force. It's the wisdom of Kabbalah. And you don't need to believe it. You just need to simply work on it. Let's think an hour a day that we will be happy. We'll meet each other on Channel 98 from 5 to 6 a.m.